What's up guys, Derek, more Today we're gonna to be talking about taking an anti-androgen during PCT to trick your body into recovering faster. So this was an interesting theory that was proposed on my recent video on 90% of bodybuilders have never done a proper PCT, which I highly recommend you check out that video because a lot of PCT practices that are circulated in the community are just nonsensical and most guys that think they are recovering are in fact not. And they are just, you know, cruising essentially on a you know, residual amount of suppressive hormones in their body and they have no idea and they think they're cleaning out when in reality, they're just not. So I highly recommend you check out that video first, but this theory was proposed in the comment section. I thought it was so good that I should make a whole video on it. And he commented, this is just a theory, but what if you took an anti-androgen drug right after your last injection, dropping your androgen levels on purpose rather than trying to increase natural testosterone, which guys are, you know, using SERMs and HCG to try and do that. And if you dropped it fast enough, like in a week, the hypothalamus would detect low T and begin producing testosterone again. But since it's only been, been a week of low androgens, you wouldn't lose that muscle. So the theory is basically tricking your brain into thinking it's in a deprived androgen environment, because typically the negative feedback via the HPTA is going to prevent you from recovering. And there's some of these compounds like 19 nors are suppressive even at minuscule dosages to the point where you can be shut down for months on end. So this theory, you know, obviously makes sense if you're using on, on paper, it made, made sense. And I actually had to think about it for a second. So if you're antagonizing androgen receptors and you're using something that's tricking your brain into thinking you have low androgens, which it technically will, but basically tricking your brain into think thinking all the exogenous hormones have cleared your system already. Could you kickstart natural production like earlier? So this was my response. I'm just going to read it word for word because there's no way I'm going to, I'm going to end up rambling if I, don't, if I don't just read it. So I said, this sounds like a good idea in theory and on paper it could work. However, this is the predicament I see arising. So if you're on an anti-androgen, even if you crank your natural testosterone levels up via the disinhibition of pituitary luteinizing hormone secretion, so just stay with me here. I'll make it into English after I finish reading this. Uh, a big portion of that testosterone can't bind and transcribe its effects in tissues. And then you would still have the residual exogenous anabolics circulating around, tripping off target activity. In addition, by using something that tricks your brain but prevents endogenous androgens from facilitating their effects properly, it will also elevate the risk of gyno. For example, if I did my last pin and then I used a selective competitive silent antagonist of the AR androgen receptor to artificially crank my natural production up, I would end up in a very vulnerable position for gyno, gynecomastia, bitch sits, via unopposed estrogen <laughs> getting pushed into super physiological territory. So gynecomastia occurs in up to 80% of men treated with bicalutamide, which is a non-steroidal anti-androgen that is common used in uh, like transitioning from male to female, for example, and in some other, you know, clinical setting context. So, and those men are not shut down prior to stirring that bicalutamide. So guys are getting gyno 80% of the time using bicalutamide, even starting with normal endogenous androgen production, not even being shut down. So basically what I'm saying is on paper, you could trick your body by essentially, so basically what this, a competitive silent antagonist of the AR does, is it occupies AR and tricks your brain essentially into thinking that it is low T because you don't have any, like you're not actually binding to the AR with your actual androgens to support, you know, tissue functions essentially. So like, you know, testosterone will circulate in your body, bind to androgen receptors, act, you know, transcribe its effects and what do what it's supposed to do essentially. So if you're preventing it from doing that with a anti-androgen like bicalutamide, you can essentially, this specific type anyways, a silent antagonist, you can trick your brain into thinking it is needs to produce more luteinizing hormone to produce more tests, which then in turn, if you look at it on paper, you actually spike your testosterone and your estrogen levels up significantly, even though you're, you know, even if you're natural, your testosterone, and your estrogen levels go way up when you use it. So this is where the problem arises though. If you have your androgen receptors occupied by an anti-androgen, which, you know, I just described what, exactly what that does. If you're going to push your estrogen levels up too concurrently, concurrently with that spike in T, which makes you gyno prone as is, as a natural. But now you're in a state of complete shutdown too, where you're already very prone, prone to gyno. And now you're spiking your estrogen through the roof artificially by tricking your brain in an already gyno prone environment where 
Even naturals that aren't in a gyno prone environment prior to starting bicalutamide are getting 80% chance of gyno. So to me on paper, while you could in theory spike your testosterone levels, at the end of the day, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position because on paper, you might be able to increase your natural production, but are you really accomplishing anything other than putting a health burden on your body? Because those suppressive hormones are still gonna be circulating in your system. And now that they can't bind to androgen receptors or they're being outcompeted for binding essentially, they're gonna be tripping off target activity where they have you know, a propensity to bind to progesterone receptors or they have a propensity to inherently activate estrogen receptors or they have some sort of you know, something else. They all, a lot of these drugs have affinities, although lower to bind with other things in the body and receptors that would otherwise not be getting tripped because they're attaching to AR and doing what they're supposed to do at AR level. So personally, I think it's a bad idea because I think not only are you still going to be technically suppressed, you're just tricking your body. You're going to be spiking your chance of gyno and then increasing the likelihood of side effects from whatever anabolics you're on from tripping all the off-target activity that they would otherwise be less likely to do because now they have nowhere to attach or a lesser likelihood to attach to AR because they're being competed with with the bicalutamide. So hopefully that makes sense. And this is more so like a technical video. So at the end of the day, you don't really need to worry about it because it's just something that I don't suggest doing. So um, it was just a very interesting topic that came up though. So I thought it was worth addressing because some of the, you know, nerds on my channel like myself are going to appreciate this topic in my opinion. And, you know, a lot of people might, they might say, oh, well, why don't you just, you know, introduce a serum then to occupy the estrogen receptor and then antagonize it there and pre prevent you from getting gyno. It's like at the end of the day, though, you're still increasing the likelihood of side effects from the circulating suppressive hormones in your body. The exogenous anabolics aren't getting cleared at a quicker rate based on the fact that bicalutamide is competing, in my opinion or at least the likelihood is low. There's just a very, it's a higher likelihood that they're going to induce more side effects and it's going to be a far more complicated hormonal environment to manage once you put yourself in this predicament, in my opinion, for not really a significantly improved um, outcome in terms of uh, restoring natural production. Like if you really wanted to artificially produce uh, test naturally again, there are ways to stimulate this that wouldn't involve, you know, going the most complicated route like this. and I don't think either are going to be ideal. I think, you know, the main way to go about it is not the traditional PCT route. And frankly, I can't even really delve into what I think is the optimal way to go about it because it's probably not YouTube friendly. But anyway, I just don't think that is the route to go. So anyways, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to get emailed all my articles when they go live, they're far more concise and professionally laid out in my videos with table of contents, hyperlinks to all the clinical studies I reference for my information. If you wanna delve into it further yourself for your own personal research, that uh, list, mailing list link is in the video description below for you guys to sign up for and you aren't going to get sent those articles otherwise. So I highly recommend you sign up for that. If you wanna support the channel, check out my turnkey pre-workout formulas, gorillamode.com. The link is, link is in the description below. Um, just compare the label of your current pre to my pre's and I guarantee you won't be disappointed. I highly recommend you try it out. It's all the stuff I would make in a concoction myself if I didn't have a company and what I used to, you know, mix up myself with raw powders essentially now actually in a turnkey formula. So I highly recommend you check that out um, as well as my cognitive enhancing nootropic formulas, which are just as strong and on par with the pre-workouts, but in the new in the nootropics niche and they are great for enhancing focus, productivity, cognitive health, etc. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.